going on, y'all? It's Jsmo Reviews here, back at it again with another video, man. Bringing you guys a series that I did a couple times, a series that I really loved, and I, I only get to do at a certain time of the year for certain events, and I'm bringing it back here. And as you can see, it is my battle record um, videos here, just going over the record, particularly on a certain series of events, because with a lot of Hall of Famers, you know, we're talking like 40-something battles, and maybe one day I'll do a full battle record for some of these battlers, but obviously it takes some time. But with Gnome right around the corner, I'm doing some Gnome battle records, man, seeing what people's records are on Gnome that have been on here five or more times for the most part even you know if you guys have a recommendation for someone i should do for a known battle record leave it down below and we'll go over how they've done on this series but as you can see today we are looking at t-top's known record he has five appearances he's gonna have six with the danny myers one coming up and he's had such a good start to the year right now i just figured i'm confident in him going into the danny battle and i just want to see you know what moments has he given us on gnome what's you know what kind of low lights has he had on gnome as well and what is that overall record of impact come down to on an event that he's appeared on, appeared on five times. A big event at that. A lot of big matches, a lot of milestone matches. And without further ado, let's start from the first battle. So it's only right to start with his debut. And not only is T-Top's debut the most impactful battle that he's had on Gnome to this day, it's also, in my opinion, easily the best uh, performance and battle that he's had on Gnome. So he's starting off great. And that is T-Top versus Sue Surf on Gnome 6. Also important to add is that not only was he debuting, but this was the main event. I think a lot of people remember Rock and Nitty for the promo that it had. It went on last that night, um, so they kind of think of that as the main event when they go back to Gnome 6, but if you look at the flyer and also just how it is credited in history, I can tell you Sue Surf vs. T-Top was the main event. So there's a lot of pressure on T-Top going into that battle, right? And I think on top of that, he's in a part of his career where he wasn't like a straight rookie. He had had some great moments. He'd also had some bad ones. He had lost to Suge before, right? But this was his start on getting like Gnome 6 and then it would be SM6 getting on these big events and solidifying himself as a current top tier. And this was one of those last few tests before it became like a cemented for sure thing. And it played a part in that. If you look at how the first round of this battle starts, it is where all the highlights come from. It's where the energy of this battle comes from. Watching the first round live of Sue Surf versus T-Top was a special thing. And it starts out on Surf, and he has a great first round. And I'd say this is one of the best T-Tops overall in his career. Um, it's not, I wouldn't put in like the top five Surfs, but it's also a high quality Surf. And the first round, he's got the Tar Heels bar, you know what I'm saying? Which, I mean, I gotta mention that first because we know how iconic of a haymaker that is from Surf. Um, he has the AI, uh, the AI Cross Jordan, his little version of that, um, the whole time, AI had 37, Mike uh, only had 23, kind of playing off that Mook line. Um, another great line, in my opinion, even though it's not a haymaker from that first, is if you can't paint a picture of your own, you put a stain on somebody else's. It was an elite Sue Surf in that first round. And T-Top responds, and I think this, like, to respond like this was another one of those cementing indicators that, like, oh, no, this guy's ready for it. Because he stood in front of a bomb of a round, and T-Top's first versus Sue Surf is no joke. It's full with haymakers. One of the most haymaker-filled rounds I believe T-Top's had, personally, especially more like a bar-for-bar -bar front. Uh, Rock Rock uh, gave you life like it was your third offense. Crazy. I'm to his back like I'm burping him. The nerve of him went to the loop. Got smoked by burping him. They murdered him. Called out Moot, but he won't deserve him. We all... We all watch your career die and rebirth again because that's when Rock gave you life like it's your third offense. Bitch! 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 And then the, the get everybody in blue buried, I split muffins. For me, that's actually the bar that won him the round. It was a close, close round, but it's one of those where they were bombing so much. T-Top's round is a little longer as well but he's efficient with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like it's just, it's a great round and it's reaction that's kind of carrying out the round. By the time he got to that blueberry bar, I've always kind of, I'm not going to say always, I've really went back and forth with it a lot. But for the last little bit, I have edged T-Top um, that particular round. So I did have him up 1-0, which for many of you that have watched the battle know, that's kind of the determiner, right? Because in the second round of the battle, I believe Sue Surf just wins. He has a good round to follow. I think T-Top second is good, but the energy from such a, a great first, it was a bit of a drastic fall. While I felt like Surf second is a little worse than his first, he kept level, like for the most part. So I always gave Surf that second clear, and it comes down to the third round of the battle where it really determines itself, where it's not like the other Sue Surf chokes, even though this isn't an, this isn't an era of when Surf was choking for many years without getting three rounds out clean. 
But unlike one like versus Averb or even Rum Nitty, where there might be like a lack of effort, you can visually see that. I think he he had a great he was starting off a great third versus T top, and he has to take the chain off. It's messing with the mic, and he really just gets thrown off. Now I'm not really saying that. I'm just saying that to give context for real. It's, it's a choke at the end of the day. You lost yourself the round. You can't be doing that. But you know, kind of luckily for T top because he had a, a cool third, but. Who knows? But we don't have to know. We don't have to look into that timeline because Sue Surf did choke, and T Top does a great job with having that elite put it in the catalog first round for me to give him that victory. It went. It's been different over the years. I know a lot of people say even though Surf choked, he still won in the first two. But even if you have Surf winning, you know that first round is very, very, very debatable. Um, but I just personally edge it to T Top. So debut, main event, all the pressure that goes with that. And I had T-Top winning 2-1 over Sue Surf to start out at 1-0 on Gnome after Gnome 6. So after such a great debut on Gnome 6, right, what happened with T-Top is what happens with many stars throughout your history and like just the logical thing to do. You do great on Gnome 6. They give him SM6. He does great on that too versus Av. It's not an SM battle record video, but he did win that battle. And then this is the year they actually had two Gnomes in one year. I believe 6 and 7 are in the same year. So either way, he was immediately on the next Gnome, and that was versus Goods on Gnome 7. So Sue Surf, Goods, definitely high up there with the schedule, but he had earned it. He had kept winning. He had been one of the top performers. I will say, though, this performance is not quite the highlight performance that it was versus Surf, though, but it's not as bad as some people remember. T-Top is pretty good in this battle. In the first round watching it, even though it's not it's not his best round of the battle, I'd say it's actually his second best round, right, to be exact, but it's like, um, you know, some jabs, right? Like, doing solid but hasn't picked up. Maybe it's getting towards a dry spot. Boom, he lands a good bar. The, the whip it with the left Mono Ginobili skills, right? And then it's kind of, you know, jabbing, jabbing. He's getting him. I want to see if goods is tangible, right? And then, you know, before it's a dry spot, it lands another good bar. It was kind of one of those rounds where it's solid, nothing wrong with it, but it's not powerful, you know, which is something you need for this battle. And goods is first, to me, the first being the most debatable round of the battle. Um, goods is first, just a different approach that some people aren't going to like. You know, it reminds me. Well, A, with Goods, I, he's more of a tactician. It's not going to be he's just always going to get you with straight punches. He's going to talk to your soul a little bit. It's not as quotable, but it's applicable to you, right? He's going to clown you, kind of diffuse and turn the optics on you. Diffuse what you're doing well and turn the optics of the room on you. And You can't quite quote that, but that is a skill that can win you battles. And that's a key thing with Goods I think some people just don't understand. Yes, I love punches. I love quoting everything, and he has some later in this battle. Don't get me wrong, but... You can win in another way sometimes. And for me, I edge Goods the first, but it could be called, you know, it is very clowning on him, a little bit of money talk, you look like the back of your neck stank, you know, all types of that. So the first debatable, personally edges the Goods, though, better energy, more confident. Second round, T-Top is good again, and he has, in my opinion, his best bar of the battle, the the me, Hennessy, and you joint. Nigga, they gonna have to hook him up the tools, hanging on for his life. He feel like Bishop on the roof, Big Papa. You either start giving me the loot or take this fifth to the head. It's me, Hennessy, and you. Bitch, I'm really... <laughs> he picks up pace. He's hit landing at more of a consistent rate. And it also, in a way, reminds me of Suge versus T-Top. If you watch that battle, I feel like Suge did things better outside of just bar for bar than T-Top that kind of turned the room on him, turned the optics on him, the performance that he used. But T-Top is good in the first two rounds of this battle. Like, bar for bar, punch-wise, a little bit of angling in there too, but for the most part, he was able to just bar up Goods and talk to him a bit. But Goods is second. Now, not only is he being strategic, he's kind of, you know, he starts out the second hilarious with the name it a bunch of random stuff and it's the birth of it's just a few things i think about while y'all rap i don't hear you so automatically flips that momentum and then from there uh shoot him in the right side and push everything that's left over uh bang on tv just to get the picture clear like he had some bars some, some peak bars in that second kind of reminds me of even like his second verse tay rock in a way where it's like oh shit good's kind of dropping some haymakers so the room is already tough because the first is debatable-ish, but Goods had the better energy, and then he clearly takes the second from you. And by the time he gets to the third, it's T-Top's like weakest round. You can kind of just feel that it's against him at this point, and now you're getting into you just came off your best round, and that clearly got beat. You know, like it's just tough to keep that energy up. And then Goods talks to him a little bit more in the third, kind of boss to worker talk. Um, you know, I was the boss in the trap while you're over here bagging up. I'm, I'm kind of running the operation. You know, in, in only so many words is how I describe it. So 
you know, really, really good goods performance. And for those that, you know, most people are just going to feel how they feel about goods either way. But for those that haven't, like, understood that diffusing factor and what people mean, this is the perfect performance to show that because T-Top was good in this battle. He was pretty good in the first two rounds, like I said, even really good in the second but just got out strategy a bit. So he starts out with that great de debut versus Surf, and it's not that he's bad versus Goods, but at a point earlier in his career, he might have just learned a few listen lessons and just got caught with an approach that he wasn't quite prepared for. So I have him personally as a gentleman's 30 uh, losing the Goods, but you could have it, you know, 2-1 with T-Top winning the first, and I have him at 1-1 one one after two gnomes. Now we get to gnome eight. So he is on three gnomes straight, which just goes to show how much he was being utilized, how much T-Top, and to this day, he's counted on. There's a reason he's going to be on gnome 14, but this is what some may consider prime T-Top in a sense. But it might kind of slow down there when he gets to gnome 8 because he does battle again, and it's him versus Ill Will in Houston. And this is where a particular little curse of T-Top's career starts, and that is the man's record in Houston, Texas, or at least his performance rate. And it starts here with Ill Will, which was a grudge match. Based off of the UFF beef, they have called each other out a few times. Ill Will, I think the most recent call out before had been Ill Will calling out T-Top versus Rum Nitty. Calls him out in the third round freestyling. Very good call out at that. Um, and people had wanted this one for a minute. You know, like the, comp the, the competition of the UFF winners, they were supposed to battle before, but they didn't end up doing it. Now they battle here. What's kind of funny is that it's a dominant battle. It's really not that good of a battle from either side. Uh, from first to third, and talk about T-Top more first, and it, this just comes down to dry, dry bars. Like, like, the bars just weren't hitting like that. A lot of will, will, flips, but nothing crazy. Angling, not landing whatsoever, which I think is an early example of this happening to T-Top, where up to this point, I mean, he was easily considered one of the best anglers in the game at this point, working in that direction. Um... Because he kind of had already, he's still doing trap talk, but it went through that phase a little bit and had entered that era where he was elite with angling, but they just weren't landing this battle. They don't land in the first, they don't land in the second, they don't land in the third. And this is the weird thing where sometimes T-Top shows up to Houston and he just can't get it going at all. Um, and on the other side, Ill Will's really not that good in this battle. And he has a crazy moment in the second. The Adrian Bronner in this bitch, right? I'll uh, have you looking like Adrian Bronner in this bitch. So that moment, I think, is just all people remember from the battle. Because people remember it as it is. Ill Will 3-0. It's really, it's not good. I rewatched it for this. It's not, it's not an enjoyable watch that much from either side. But it's more about just who wasn't worse. And while Ill Will was steady, still had a couple moments, you know what I'm saying? It's a grudge match, and he still brought that aggression, although he wasn't firing all cylinders. It's like T-Top just mismanaged the whole situation. Versus Goods, it's different. An approach worked against you. You did something good, but matchup-wise, he utilized something. Ill Will was very beatable that night, but it just happened to be one of really the worst nights of T-Top's career, personal performance-wise. Um, so, three gnomes in, and the competition is crazy. Sue Surf, Goods, and Ill Will. All big stage, all no joke. But the Ill Will one up to this point is by far the hard, the, the harshest result. He lost 3-0, really no other way to call it. And now I have him at 1-2 and two so far on his gnome record. And you thought that might be as bad as it gets. I'm here to tell you it's going to get a little bit worse because a couple gnomes were taken off, right? He's not on gnome 9, which is a historic gnome, right? Just didn't, I don't think he had a matchup at the time. We saw how stacked that card is. He's not on gnome 10, um, well, which is not much of a shocker at the time. I don't think there was a big matchup for him that was getting called out. Gnome 11, he was supposed to battle swap. So this is him missing a few gnomes. That gets canceled. We know how much that battle got pushed back. We don't see him again. Until Gnome 12, which is after the COVID Gnomes. He'd been on the, the SM, so it's not like he was benched or anything like that. He just did happen to not be on a few Gnomes. And then he gets on Gnome 12, returns to the big stages, and you he, he headlines again. How about that? He's got another Gnome headliner. He's the main event versus Tay Rock uh, once again in Houston. I actually attended this event live. I was in the front row. I was tired as fuck by the time this battle came on. Houston Heat, you know what I'm saying, all up in the summer. We already went through a full night of battles. And if you thought the ill will battle was as bad as it gets, I'm, it's not. <laughs> because the Tay Rock battle is maybe just the flat-out worst loss of, of T-Top's career. And this is very similar to the ill will battle where 
it's it's the Houston curse for him, man. He just couldn't get it going at any point uh, in the battle. And this one, I'm gonna, I'm tough. It's tough. You can't have either performance, but this one really for me was damning for T Top because he chose clearly wrong angles and approaches to take. Um, bar for bar, he just wasn't too crazy, which is funny because in the virtual battle they did, he was incredible bar for bar versus Tay Rock. This is a virtual, but the the chain, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that shit was crazy. Like, he had used some good angles in a in a different type of way, you know, versus Tay Rock before. So to get up here and just do so much Fred and, and, and uh, transgender angles, you know, versus Tay Rock, where... Listen, I'll say it one. I've said it a million times. I'll say it again here. Mook pulled it off crazy, right? He didn't have the evidence, but the way he dressed it up, insane. Daylight took the more lyrical approach with it. They both had great uses of it. And since then, almost every Tay Rock Fred angle is either awful or it's just dry and you know that you're going to face better material. And while Tay Rock was just punching him, back to back and this is this this is no 12 is not long ago so this is part of that newer era tay rock where it's that amg mode right it's the multi-syllabics that he's doing for over a four or five minute period holding the same rhyme pattern so he's building up momentum on you gray's top sheet happens he's landed haymakers he's kind of smoking you and you're misfiring with angles in a place that already is like skeptical because the T-Top and Houston noise had already kind of started sounding off at this point. So the ill will battle, rough to lose a grudge match this way. This is not a grudge match. It's another headliner that people probably don't remember as the headliner. So it's not as significant in that in that sense. But Tay Rock just beat T-Top so bad for three rounds. It becomes an unfortunately significant part of his career. So it's tough, man. He started out with his best battle. A lot of promise. And listen, Hall of Fame career. But just in terms of how the gnomes have went, after that great start versus Surf, the goods battle is a loss. Be pretty good, just getting shown a few things. The Will battle, misfire. And then the Tay Rock battle, even more of a misfire. A body bag loss. So at this point, I do have T-Top 1-3 and three on Gnome. And then that leaves you with his final appearance that he had. Unfortunately, those first four are the only 1v1 appearances that he's had so far on Gnome. Which is very unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? Because 1-3 and three is the craziest record. However, though, obviously, when you look at the strength of schedule we went up against, Sue Surf... Tay Rock, Goods, Ill Will. It's not, even if I asked you what's the easiest fight of the four, you're probably going to tell me like Goods or Ill Will. So that just shows the level of battler that he was facing off against. Uh, and it just so happens that the past two gnomes were in Houston, and it's just a place that hasn't went too good for him. But he did have one more. It was a 2v2 battle, though, on the following gnome after gnome 12. Gnome Impact, where him versus in Swamp, teamed up to battle Av and Fonz. And going into this battle, they were heavy underdogs. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that it happened, right? And I remember going in myself and many, just having Av and Fonz winning the chemistry they had shown versus Lou and K-Shine in particular. And even though it's a bigger stage, these two come up with the craziest haymakers. You know, Fonz has been ascending, Av's been consistent. Why can't they replicate that on a bigger stage? Um, but you got to give credit, even though the, what, the last three didn't go too good for him. T-Top and Swamp, uh, you know, put their minds together, man, had a very good performance that started out with power early. I feel like Av and Fonz uh, just found themselves in a problem that some punchers get in where they weren't really rapping fast, but just when the punches start to just not... It's not be as effective, right? When punches start to hit his jabs and you find yourself going through the round keep going through the round with a lack of that reaction or a lack of that momentum building. It just feels like bars being said, and I feel like that's when you get to the point where some people that aren't the biggest fans of punchers can say it's boring or it's very, like, just back-to-back. I think I don't believe either of these talents are robotic, but it can feel a little bit like that when there's no reaction. It can feel very default, in a sense. While T-Top and Swamp completely snatch the attention of the room, a little bit of comedy starting out with Swamp, talking about Smack, why are you calling me Kutnu? Uh, T-Top, who has always been a funny character, but especially as he got more comfortable with his veteranship, he can be hilarious on stage, very performative, and a comedy is a big part of how he becomes so performative. And they just got after him in the first two rounds of this battle, particularly the first. They had this thing where it's like, you know what's better than a, you know what I'm saying, a this, a Ruger. You know what's better than a puncher, a shooter. Like, they had a whole pocket leading up to that punch. Really just got after him. Well, it continued in the second round, although Av and Fonz were a bit better. 
T-Top and Swamp just have more of an all-around game. And that's why they mentioned at the beginning of the battle, they teamed up and Swamp had beaten... The only thing that Swamp and T-Top had in common is Swamp beat Fonz and T-Top beat Av, right? And it's just one of those where this kind of Southern... You know, whether it's drug talk or even real talk, which they did for a good amount of the battle, kind of either tailor-made or soul talk, it'll take the attention away from punches sometimes. It's how they won individually versus Av and Fonz, and it also is how they teamed up and won in the two-on-two. Now, in the third round of the battle, they kind of have their dip. I believe Swamp stumbles in the third as well, and Av and Fonz go ballistic, particularly Av and or Fonz during his ISO in the third. So it's a two-on-two. It's not the craziest thing. It did No impact wasn't all that great, and this was one of the better battles on the card, but T-Top and Swamp showed up. They won the first two rounds pretty clear, and by the time Av and Fonz were able to garner that crowd, uh, crowd and kind of heat up, you're already down 2-0 in the battle. So 2-1, you know, it's a 2-1-2. Like I said, it's not the, the most fun one to enter on, but it does complete his battle record here. It is a W, which leaves T-Top at 2-3 and three so far on the Gnome series. And that is, you know, my full battle record here uh, for T-Top's, you know, Gnome track record. And if you look at all the competition just on paper, even though one of them is a 2-1-2, so it's going to dress it up a little, I know. But Sue Surf, Goods, Ill Will, Tay Rock, Av Fonz, and now Danny Myers soon to follow. It's it's night of main events. It's supposed to be your biggest battles for the most part, and you know, boy has it ever. Man, man's battled two members of gun titles. Ill Will is a Hall of Famer on two different leagues. Goods is a super legend. Two of the best punchers. Three of the best punchers. You add Danny um, over the last you know really ever in battle rap, but especially over the last five years. So even though the record isn't the most impressive at two and three, I know it doesn't pop off the page. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. And when we do more of these and you see more of these guys' records, you'll realize there's no one that's just going to be rocking like like a 7-1 and or anything like that. Battle rap is a difficult sport, particularly with debatable. It's going to be judged different ways. You know what I'm saying? If you're really, if you're a big surf fan, you might even have T-Top 1-4, and right? Um, But you're going to see a lot that's kind of hovering around 500 because when it's this competitive, it's hard to just sweep the competition or anything like that. But I would love to hear your guys' uh, opinions in the comments down below. What do you think of T-Top's known record so far? Do you call it the same? What are the standout moments? And do you apply any of this to his Danny battle? Um, I personally don't besides the fact that he's a lot of experience. You know, he's done really good and he's done really bad. On top of that, I think that he's been doing great recently and obviously that recent that last six months track record for me is always going to be a little bit more important than maybe what you did two or three years ago some patterns could come from the past and help you win a battle or or you that version could show up but for the most part i'm going to go off of not the recent recent transactions but your last six months to a year what's that look like um, and it's looked great for T-Top. So I think there's a good chance he's going to be 3-3 three and three after Gnome 14. But you guys let me know, like I said, record, how you call it, and all your opinions on T-Top's career, particularly in the Gnome series. But it's been J-Smo Reviews again, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know who you want to see next for a Gnome battle record. And I'm going to catch you on the next one, man. Peace.